Hello everyone, I'm Edvinas and I work at Wix. And today I want to share how we use data for product development. Firstly, first, a uh, few questions about, few sentences about me. So, uh, I have been working at Wix for three years. Uh, before that, I worked in different uh, data related positions. I uh, started as a data analyst, then I was a data engineer for a few years, and now I'm uh, back at uh, data analytics. And I work in one of the product teams at Wix. And uh, my main function is to help uh, product uh, team to use the data effectively and uh, enable the data-driven decisions. So the agenda today, uh, firstly, I will give you a short intro on what is Wix. The goal is not to advertise, promote the product, just to give you the necessary context. Um, then we will overview data analytics at uh, Wix and uh, I will explain how we integrate data into the product cycle, a product life cycle. Then, um, for this presentation, I have prepared two real stories from our day-to-day -day life. Uh, so, hope uh, that will be interesting. And finally, I will wrap everything up, and we will have some time for questions. So, what is Wix? I will not go over all the history of Wix, but long story short, it started in 2006 uh, by three or four guys in Israel who had the vision to enable non-technical people to build websites for themselves. And uh, at this day, Wix offers full range of solutions to manage any kind of website. And you can see at the top, uh, for example, we have a product to enable create a, an e-shop and do e-commerce. You can use bookings to sell your services, use events to organize events and uh, sell tickets. So any kind of uh, business model that you can imagine, you can build it in Wix. And on top of that, we have uh, stable, secure, infrastructure and offer all the necessary functionality for managing your website. And at this moment, Wix is divided into two types of builders. One is for simple self-creators, and the other one is Wix Studio for advanced uh, professional designers or uh, developers. This uh, broad functionality enables us to target broad audience. So as mentioned, from self-creators to professionals to even very big enterprise kind of clients. A few sentences here. So Wix is, uh, was founded in Israel. We have a big R&D office there. Then two other big offices is in Ukraine and in Vilnius. But as you see, we have like smaller offices in everywhere else. Final slide in this section. I will not go over all these numbers, but uh, the two that I want to mention, total registered users, we have over 260 million registered users, and out of them, six million users are premium users who pay for our product. So having this big user base, uh, and uh, each, no, uh, each change in our product, uh, can have a significant uh, impact because of these uh, big numbers, big users, and anything that we change in our product, uh, it affects uh, billions of users. So that's why we need to be very informed before changing anything in the product, and that's where the data comes in. So at Twix we have 400 uh, data people, data-related positions. Um, they are split in four different roles, analysts, scientists, data scientists, engineers, and data infra people. So uh, also worth mentioning that we don't have a separate analytics department. We have our data analysts integrated into each product. So. What does it mean to be data-driven for Wix? Uh, first of all, 
we track everything. We want to know what's happening in our product, and for that we have uh, we use BI events, we use productional database replicas, we use uh, site content data and other sources. Everything goes through our data pipelines to our data model. We have strict guidelines for data modeling um, to not have mess in our data warehouse. Then next thing is no gut feelings. So we have uh, tons of uh, smart and creative people with awesome ideas, but uh, no idea will be considered seriously if it's not backed up by data. Next thing, every feature is A-B tested, and for us, even the smallest UI changes needs to be A-B tested. Uh, usually, not usually, but sometimes we don't even expect the change to increase our KPIs. We run just uh, defensive A-B tests to be sure that it doesn't have any kind of negative impact. Next thing, data analysts as uh, business partners. So the full name of the data analyst position at Wix is a data business analyst, and the keyword here is uh, business. So we expect from our analysts to be more than uh, SQL query writers. Uh, we expect them to be business partners and uh, to be, in an ideal case, to be able to have ideas uh, for new features for the product and to have it based on data. And final thing here, uh, data access to everyone in the company. So our company is built on transparency and uh, everyone has access to data. We have a bunch of reports. We use, we use Tableau and Power BI. We have monthly, quarterly, yearly um, company updates, business updates. And on the top of that, we have in-house built self-service user-friendly tool for analytics. So even non-technical People without the knowledge of SQL can query the data themselves. Um, also, uh, in our case, for our product, uh, our users are also uh, data consumers. So usually a website owner is a business owner, and for their operational purposes, they need to also see the data. And the main challenge here for us is that the data that we need, uh, they need it in real time without any uh, long delays. Um, and for that, we have built a, a complex infrastructure to make sure that the user gets uh, information about their website in uh, real time and without any delays. So, uh, as mentioned, Wix is a product company and we have uh, data teams integrated into the product teams. Uh, in order to have a more efficient and uh, the most uh, data-driven product lifecycle. So, the way we create uh, new products and features can be illustrated by this flow. Uh, firstly, it starts with a research phase where everyone in the product team is involved. So product designers, product managers, developers, everyone is researching a new feature uh, from their point of view. And here also the data people is involved. So let's say a product manager comes up with a new idea, uh, which she or he got from a user interview, market research, or it just came to the person's head. So the task for the data person, for the data analyst, is to check if uh, this idea is valid in according, accordance to what the data shows. So when we have done the research, we can then build mockups of our product. So here are uh, different flows and other aspects of the feature is mocked up. And uh, for analyst, at this time, he can or she, he can already plan the KPIs and the measurements that will be used 
for uh, the new feature and most importantly implementing BI events. So we are defining what clicks, what events we will track and we will see in our database. Then there is the design, st sorry, design stage, development, uh, QA stage, and when the uh, feature is ready to be released for the users, we run uh, A-B tests. So we, as mentioned, want to be sure that the A-B tests, uh, the, that the new feature does not mess up our KPIs. And when the A-B test is successful, we launch the new feature for everyone, for all of the users. Finally, after some time passes, we already have enough data to make an analysis of the pitch of the feature and uh, the goal usually is to see if the feature is used as it was intended. This moment ends the cycle and uh, if the analysis shows that the feature needs some improvements, we start this uh, cycle again. So this was uh, overview of uh, what we, uh, high level overview, but my goal today is to show you some real, real things from our day to day. So um, today we are here in this uh, Danske Tech Night event and uh, we have a bunch of data people here, but let's say I came up with an idea to create my own data conference, I created a site with some generic information about the event, so Vilnius Data Conference 2024, it has its uh, speakers, agenda, and uh, all the other necessary information. And there is this uh, call to action button, buy tickets, when you click on it, you get deeper into the site, and here is the ticket picker, as we call, so you can buy select different types of tickets. In this case, we have free, um, general, VIP, and student tickets. You select your tickets, you check out, um, enter your card details, and you receive the tickets. I, as a site owner, I see my sales, my orders in this uh, back office dashboard. In this case, I have 10 orders. And the next tab, I have my guest list. So each guest received an email confirmation with QR code and uh, the staff of my event will scan uh, the tickets and will let in the guests. But let's say I have a problem. Uh, I want to add my colleagues from Wix to this conference and I don't want to charge them. For that purpose, we have uh, this add new guest uh, functionality where you can enter each uh, of your uh, guest yourself as a site owner you can uh, you can select the type of ticket you want them to get you can uh, send them the email confirmation and they will not need to pay for it uh, and they will get the email confirmation um, so overviewing this uh, through the life cycle it's a feature that is like uh, already developed we have ran the ab test it the feature was used for some time and now it's time to analyze is it really used as we intended to be used? And for this, we chose this session um, definition, session thing, where uh, in this case, the session is the period when we have less than 30 minutes gap between each guest added. A uh, quick example, so this is a timeline. Let's say I add a guest at 12, then I get, add next one five minutes later, so it's less than 30 minutes, still the same session. Three minutes again, one more, 15 minutes, still the same session because it's less than 30 minutes. But after 35 minutes, I add another one. And in this case, we have two separate sessions. One had four guests added, and the second one had only one. So I ran this logic through all of our sites and we found one site that is a business conference event in India which are using this feature very, very heavily. So someone sit on their laptop and entered 1,100 uh, guests manually which took them four hours. Uh, with this uh, square I illustrate the session because uh, here it's 
cut off because it's more than 30 minutes. But then, then we can see this chart indicates uh, how many guests were added manually in one minute. And there above, you can see that in one minute, someone managed to enter 16 guests, which is impossible because you need to enter name, surname, email, and need for it to load and you need to start entering another one. So long story short, we noticed, uh, we dive in deeper and we noticed that this site had 13 staff members entering these guests. Each uh, line is a different uh, staff member user of this specific site. So then we ran the same for per site per single user. Uh, we still got huge uh, examples. So in this case, 260 guests added in one session. It was a private school uh, charity event in the United States. They also sold real tickets, but they also were adding lots of guests. Uh, and it also lasted for them for four hours. Um, so this analysis, we s firstly, we noticed that this feature is very important for the site owners. They are hiring people to enter guests manually and they sit hours uh, on their computers and entering these uh, guest names. Uh, so with the, we identified, with these findings, we identified a problem that with um, current UI, this kind of functionality is not efficient and um, it takes too much. So the solution is to allow users to add multiple guests at once. We are working on this feature. It's a recent uh, thing and don't have any, any mockups to show, but uh, this is the thing that we will uh, be working in the real time, in the near time. So that's the first thing, the first example. Then another one is a simple A-B test. Uh, this is the flow of A-B tests at Wix. So let's say we have a reason for an A-B test and uh, we decide to do it. So the first step is obviously to develop um, different versions for the feature. Uh, it can be two versions, it can be three, it can be more. Usually it's two or three for us. Uh, when you have the versions, the analyst then defines the KPIs and goals for this test. And when we have the versions and we have this, uh, these KPIs defined, we launch the test. It runs for some time. We test it on some percent of population and we get uh, some data collected. We then uh, run this data for our uh, statistical uh, in-house tools and we have the statistics, the significance calculated of the differences between the versions and we can analyze the results of the AB. Finally, we did the analysis and now we can make a decision to do this feature or not. So uh, the context for the example EB test is related to one of our features. Uh, as you understood, I work in event, uh, events product and we have this uh, seating map builder. Uh, here you can uh, build your venue plan and cancel tickets for specific seats. So every one of you bought tickets in cinema, bought tickets for specific row, specific seat. So this is, uh, this is enabling this functionality. And uh, by conducting user interviews, our PM, she, product manager, she have this, uh, had this hypothesis that this feature is, that many users are not aware of this uh, feature. So this uh, seating map builder is accessed through this seating map card on your tickets and uh, seating tab. And uh, the thing that we are testing is exactly this small seating map card. We chose two KPIs for this A-B test. Um, in this case, click, just a simple click on this great a seating map button and other KPI is to measure the actual usage of this feature. So the goal is not to only drive users to this feature, but to be sure that we are driving users that are uh, intended to use it. So 
here will be the versions. A is the default one. B, putting it top center position of the page. And C is the same, but without the icon. So just jumping back to B, C, no icon. Um, so how the test result. Firstly, we will not go over into the actual numbers, but uh, button click rate, let's say it's baseline. So the B version, the centered one with icon for clicks had an uplift of 180, 180%. And uh, the C version had also huge, but a, bit, a little bit less than B, which is 166. So obviously the results, it's like common sense. It's obvious you put a thing in the middle top uh, part of the screen. It's nothing shocking here. It got lots more clicks, lots more clicks on the feature. But the other KPI, which was more important for us, uh, seating feature usage. So it also increased. It increased uh, 24 and 22 percent for um, uh, the other two versions that we are testing. And uh, this test uh, confirmed the hypothesis uh, that we had. So two findings, uh, which I actually already uh, mentioned, it confirmed the hypothesis. Users not only are opening it, but are also using the feature. Um, and the obvious decision, we launched uh, version B, and uh, all users now see this seating map card on the top middle um, part of this, this window. Uh, so, wrap up. Uh, firstly, if you are a big company, each decision matters and it needs to be well-informed and uh, based on data. And uh, also the data-driven approach uh, needs to be um, integrated in all the necessary processes of the company. The two, my two examples, uh, the first one, you know, the, the an insight is to analyze your features to be sure that um, they are used as intended and they be test. So even if uh, the common sense like uh, can predict the results and it was expected, but we still need to confirm that the feature achieves the desired effect. And in this case, not to blindly lead people to the feature, but to also be sure that we are leading those who are uh, actually interested in it. So that was it. And thank you for attention. It's now time for questions.